On July 7th, 2019, the 129th episode of Pokemon the series Sun and Moon was broadcast in Japan. The episode centred around the beginning of the Alola Pokemon League, a battle royale competition featuring 151 of the best and brightest in the region. We'll get back around to the exact quality of the competitors a little later. Right now I want to focus on precisely how we got here. What led to Ash and his friends competing in a free-for-all to determine the top 16 trainers in Alola? Well, first we need to jump back to the late 90s. Of course, the term Battle Royal goes back much further, possibly dating back to the 1700s. Back then it mostly referred to bare-knuckle boxing, but in the latter half of the 20th century it came to be known more for professional wrestling. It's in 1999 that we find the origin for the more modern-day understanding of the Battle Royal or Battle Royale. Completed in 1996, Koshin Takami's novel Battle Royale was entered in a 1997 Japanese horror fiction competition. Although the judges seemed to agree that Battle Royale was the standout entrant, the book was rejected for the somewhat controversial subject matter. One year after the book was published in 1999, a film adaptation was released in December of 2000. It went on to be the highest grossing live action film of 2001 in Japan, but didn't make quite as much as Spirited Away or Pokemon Forever. What an iconic trio of films. The book and movie redefined the term Battle Royale. The plot sees a class of high school students kidnapped and taken to a remote island where they're forced to fight to the death by order of the totalitarian government of the Republic of Greater East Asia. Students enter the arena one by one with a map of the island, some bread, some water, and a weapon. As time goes on, certain areas of the map are made off-limits, driving everyone left to the same zone. This should all sound pretty familiar because it's basically the driving focus of every popular video game released in the last few years. Although it was pretty much immediately popular in Japan, the concept definitely gained traction in the US when The Hunger Games came out in 2008. Suzanne Collins drastically changes up the formula from Battle Royale, where instead of 21 boys and 21 girls making up 42 total competitors, there are 12 boys and 12 girls making up 24 in all. Those numbers are reversed, so they're basically complete opposites. Honestly, it's a decent enough series and it's what led me to read Battle Royale for the first time, so even if it's just for that, I do enjoy it. After the Hunger Games film series made $3 billion, it was really only a matter of time before somebody made a video game based solely around the concept. The popularity of the Hunger Games did lead to a massive Minecraft mod, but the genre truly exploded in 2017 with the release of PUBG and Fortnite Battle Royale. There are probably hundreds of different slightly tweaked games at this point, with Fall Guys being the most recent to briefly become the focal point of everyone's life, including mine. Around the time of the episode's release though, the genre was reaching a pinnacle. In fact, just three weeks after Battle Royale 151's release in Japan, this 16-year-old won $3 million at the Fortnite World Cup. That is an obscene amount of money. That's like the entire budget of Upgrade. That has precisely nothing to do with the video, but seriously, how did they make Upgrade for $3 million? And why hasn't the World Cup winner made a film yet? Anyway, that very long-winded point was the Battle Royale genre was blowing up and Pokemon presumably saw an opportunity to get in on the craze. Preliminary and qualifying rounds for Pokemon League conferences have varied from region to region in the anime. In Kanto, the Indigo Plateau Conference had the trainers compete on four different battlefields. Johto, Unova, and Kalos all use some form of regular battle to determine their finalists, and Hoenn features a round of double battles. So, for the first ever Manalo Conference, it made sense to mix things up. As there were no entry requirements, anyone with a Pokemon was free to enter, so they needed a quick way to narrow things down. They decided to start the tournament with a battle royal where 151 trainers would enter and only the last 16 standing would move on to the finals. There are plenty of familiar faces in the running with Ash seemingly travelling with half of the Alola natives. When he arrives in Manalo Stadium, Lana, Kiawe, Lily, Sophocles and Mallow are all in tow. As well as them, Acerola shows up and we also get to see Oluolu and the Monster Fisherman, Mina and Kahili, Jacina and Jamesio. Guzma, Plumeria, a horde of Team Skull, Grunts, and more. So what exactly is the format of this battle royal? Well, a free-for-all where teaming seems not only acceptable, but encouraged. Essentially, if you're entering with friends, you have a much better chance of winning. So, it's a standard battle royale. Anyway, as the countdown begins, trainers release their Pokémon, and we get to see a strong group featuring Salamence, Snorlax, Metagross, Skarmory, and Gyarados. So, clearly this is an elite field. As far as the core group goes, Ash is of course using Pikachu, Kiawe chooses Turtonator, Sophocles picks Togedemaru, Lana's using Sandy, her Eevee, Lily's got Snowy, her Alolan Vulpix, and Mallow's using Shaman. The mythical grass type is technically wild, so not sure where the rules fall on that. This episode features a lot of different Pokemon, with every single generation and region represented. 
Just for a comparison, here's the list of every Pokemon featured in Charmander the Stray Pokemon, the iconic episode where Ash gets his Charmander. That is a lot of empty space. Anyway, we've seen some powerful Pokemon, so let's see what they can do. The competition is surely going to be strong. Before anyone has even gotten going, this guy just sprints to the center of the battlefield with his Mudbray. As far as strategies go, it wasn't the best for this particular format. That was probably just an anomaly though, I'm sure the rest of the trainers are going to be tough to eliminate. Well, Pikachu eliminating Sudowoodo with a single Iron Tail isn't too promising, but this is a high level Pikachu, and that's super effective, it could have been a crit. Huh. Did one Electroweb just take out Poliwrath and Araquanid? What did the narrator say at the start of the episode again? It's the Alola Pokemon League, where the finest trainers gather to decide who is the strongest in Alola. Finest trainers? Hmm. I guess Alola just doesn't have any strong trainers. That's pretty much how the whole thing plays out. Kiawe's Turtonator and Lily's Vulpix team up to eliminate Salamence. It's not exactly fair, but not explicitly against the rules, apparently. Shaman and Sandy then somehow knock off Corsola, Staryu, and Herdier. By the time Togedemaru one-shots a Politoed, it's abundantly clear that 90% of the field have never even seen a battle. After Pikachu's Thunderbolt finishes off Gyarados and Skarmory to take his tally to 3 moves and 5 knockouts, we finally meet a competitor worthy of the name. Unfortunately, there is no information about him. To us, he's just another nameless trainer. This mustachioed mystery showed up to the Manalo conference and entered the first round with just a Magikarp. Who are you? There isn't even a puddle's worth of water on the battlefield. All it can do is flop about and hope to survive until the top 16. So you'll be shocked to know that some way, somehow, Magikarp does indeed hold on until the end to make it through to the next round. Yeah, okay, not really. It would have been cool though. Still, it's a pretty heroic performance. It is worth noting that because Pikachu Bolt was responsible for that double elimination, so from what we've seen, Pikachus have earned 7 KOs with just 4 attacks. Finest trainers indeed. Jessina's Mimikyu ends up taking care of Pikala and Bolt though, so the reign of terror from the electric mice is hopefully over. The episode then returns its focus to Ash as he and Pikachu come across Gladion and Silvalli. Thankfully, there are two strong trainers who know each other, so they just decide not to battle. During this face-off, Pikachu's fourth attack gets him a sixth elimination, which is a pretty solid strike rate. The only time we really get to see two decent trainers face off in this entire battle royal is when Alima comes up against Plumeria. Prior to that getting going, Alima's Eevee destroyed five different Pokemon in one go with Last Resort. There are just top quality trainers throughout this field. Plumeria Salazzle does take Eevee to its limit, but eventually she's eliminated too. Sadly, that's just about the only mini battle that the entire round features. Guzma finally shows up with his scissor towards the end to defeat a random Komoa with an unseen trainer. Then, just as Jesse's Mimikyu attacks Pikachu, Kiawe's Turtonator knocks out Metagross to leave only 16. And that's that. It just feels slightly anticlimactic. Conceptually, it's fun, but because it's not last man standing, because it's not ending with just one victor, it feels unfinished. In many ways, this is the Sagrada Familia of Pokemon competitions. By not letting us see any exciting face-offs while conflict surrounds them on every side, this just never really feels like a proper battle royale. Honestly, I would have been in favour of the entire Manalo conference taking place across like 5 episodes and the whole thing being a battle royal. Split the battlefield into different biomes and let it breathe a bit. As it played out, the final 16 had 1v1 battles until the semi-finals where they were allowed two each. Then the final was a 3 on 3 face off. I'm a big fan of over the top 6 vs 6 matchups, so for me the whole Manalo conference was a bit of a letdown. It's not until the champion has been crowned that the Manalo conference really gets exciting. Although the post tournament battle is fantastic, I wish the whole conference could have had the same energy. Anyway, here are the 16 that progressed in their last 16 matchups. Without ever seeing her in battle, Kahili was eliminated, so we have to assume that Magikarp took her down. Probably got 10 or 20 elims with Splash. The whole idea seems a bit flawed for a battle royal that ends once you're down to 16. Surely you could just choose a flyer and tell them to stay out of the way up in the air. Jesse and James basically make it through by doing this, which sort of calls the whole thing into question. I do wonder if they can make something like this work in a game? Like a huge scale Pokemon battle royale. Perhaps it would have to be like a mystery dungeon style battle just on a much larger scale. It would definitely be fun to see. Honestly, I mostly just made this video so everyone could see the Magikarp guy. 
I just find him absolutely fascinating. I also enjoy talking about Battle Royale and random episodes of Pokemon, but mostly it was for him. Okay, I think that's all I've got. Bye.